Okay, happy Sabbath po ulit mga kapatid. Kamusta po yung lunch niyo? Okay naman, masarap? Healthy? <laughs> Good. My, my lunch was amazing. At saka pinasalamatan ko rin yung host namin kanina kasi tuwang-tuwa talaga ako sa, sa meal namin. No? So thank you again for, for that. Um, ako ay nabigla kanina na na re- nagpa-request po kayo ilan sa inyo na i-continue ko yung na-share ko kanina. So, syempre, whatever I can do to inspire you and to, to help you in your journey with the Lord, okay yan sa akin. <laughs> Kahit hindi ako handa, bahala na si Lord, no? But um, the good news is that for those of you na hindi nakaabot kanina, k- kasi medyo maaga yung sharing ko um, sa t- testimonial ko, I'll just give you a quick recap tungkol sa sinabi ko kanina, no? Um, especially for our friends at uh, the Hope Channel. So, kanina umaga, binanggit ko sa kanila, paano ako naging isang Adventist? Kasi nga, um, natawo po ako sa Adventist Hospital in Taipei, Taiwan. Pero yung parents ko noon, Catholic pa po sila. And then growing up, syempre, surrounded kami sa mga Adventists na napakaganda ng example nila. So, yung mami ko yung unang-una nakapansin nun. Tapos, eventually, as we found our Adventist friends dito sa Pilipinas, nag- nag-start na yung aming Bible study sessions, no? Habang bata pa ako, no? Naalala ko pa. And then as I started accepting more and more truths, kasi hindi ako nagjudge, eh, open lang ako talaga, uh, eventually I started going to church on Sabbath na. Until... I reached college. Kumbaga, Adventist faith, yan yung pinapractice ko. So, nag-college ako sa New York. Um, ako ay nag, nag, nag-aral ng nursing. At saka habang nandun ako, I found my Adventist community in New York. That's the beautiful part with Adventist, diba? Kahit sa ang lugar sa buong uh, mundo, meron na ka talaga makita ang Adventist or as I'd like to believe, God, God commandment pe- keeping people. Ayan. So, when I was in New York, just to summarize, uh, ako ay nagpractice na ng 10 years of Adventist principles, um, including vegetarian na ako nun. Uh, I was also going to, to Sabbath, uh, to church on Sabbath. I was praying even during the prayer groups. Kulang na lang na magpa-baptize ako. So, true enough, na-convince ako ng pastor ko noon sa New York um, na okay yan, Sandra, hindi naman kailangan perfect ka, ka eh, um, kapag magpa-baptize ka. Basta you're ready to commit yourself to the Lord and um, walk together with Him in life. And because of this understanding, I decided to get baptized in Manhattan, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, and then eventually, pagbalik ko na ng Pilipinas kasi natapos ko na rin yung pag-aaral ko doon, uh, nakuha ko rin yung license ko, praise the Lord. Uh, I wanted to spend some time with my family in the Philippines at saka gusto ko sana i-extend yun. Kailangan ko ng reason, di ba? Bago ako bumalik sa States. So that's when it happened na uh, nagkatotoo kakataon na I joined uh, Miss Earth, the pageant. Locally, it's called Miss Philippines Earth. Tapos, uh, yun, nanalo ako. So, binigyan, binigyan ako ng kontrata. And because of that contract, I was able to stay longer in the Philippines and compete sa international pageant. And then, sa international pageant naman, I won first runner-up. So, may pangalawang kontrata din ako. So, bali naging two years na yung stay ko sa Philippines, which was great because it just allowed me to spend more time with my family and friends here and of course go back to my my roots of the Adventist church which I learned here talaga no so sumunod na lang yung sa New York yung experience ko doon and in this in this time that I was here I I realized as you know I was slowly becoming a celebrity I guess people started recognizing ko, uh, me sorry um I was I was just thinking to myself, parang may kulang pa rin eh. Parang even if everything's going so well and people know you, I wanted to do more with that reach that I had. Kasi sabi ko parang, I want to influence people to do something good and, you know, do, do more than what they can do for the environment. Kasi yan yung message ko during Miss Earth eh. What you can do to help the environment, to help save Mother Earth. Pero I was really thinking of how I can help people um, and bring them closer to the Lord, di ba? And because of that, that endeavor, as I said in Matthew 7, 7 earlier, um, if you seek, you will find. And if you really want to um, do something that's in the Lord's name, he will guide you. And that's how I really decided to re-strengthen my commitment with my faith and be more active um, in channeling the truths. So, yan yung short recap ng pagka-Adventist ko. And then, of course, what really attracts me to the Adventist truth is na kompleto yung truth natin, di ba? Um, it's a holistic system of truth. Lahat ng mga aspects ng buhay natin ka- 
covered sa Bible and sa spirit of prophecy. So God will not leave us um, misguided. He will really make sure if we seek the proper way to heaven and the proper principles, uh, He will guide us. Unang una dyan yung Ten Commandments, right? Just to recap, that's the foundation of it all. But if you study the Ten Commandments deeper, for instance, thou shalt not steal is, is also applicable to your body. How? You should not rob your body of its health. And how can we keep our body healthy? It's by not polluting it and eating the right food and drinking the right things. So that, that then touches on the health message and, and so forth. No? But uh, most importantly, maganda yung, yung system of truth kasi um, when it comes, for instance, to the Sabbath, from sunset to sunset, diba? Sabi natin kanina, really have to keep it fully. Why? Why do we have to do, follow the, all these instructions? Kasi nga, sabi, um, sabi sa Bible, that if you want to enter heaven, the standard is really high. And yung mga kasama natin, yung mga banal talaga ng mga angels. So, um, just to re-emphasize that, heaven isn't a place for everyone. It is for people na talagang handa para sa mga sa langit, sa Panginoon, nakaharap nila yung Panginoon habang nag-worship sila at katabi nila yung mga anghel. So sobrang banal nila, nakalahod yan, very solemn. And that's also how we should prepare ourselves in our worship here on earth. So one day when we end in heaven um, and start our life with the Lord face to face than all the angels, as, hindi na tayo mag-adjust ng masyado kasi sanay na tayo sa practice natin here on earth. So by realizing that Parang na-appreciate ko talaga lahat yung mga commandments sa binigay sa atin at bakit natin kailangan isunod yan. No? And then finally, I also shared earlier that uh, we need to raise the standard. Sa la- malayo pa lang, dapat kita na yung ating difference sa uh, ibang tao. You know, you can really see from the dress alone, um, sa panalita um, ng isang tao ay talagang Adventist siya. And then when you dine with them, Adventist din, more, more, on, more strict sila sa pagkain, etc. Pero sa malayo pa lang, dapat kita na yan. Kasi um, God chose a specific people, right? Back in the day, it used to be the Jews, di ba? Pero of course, ano nangyari? Nang ba si Jesus sa cross? Kung baga, the Lord um, always will have His own people in every generation through time. And to summarize, kahit ano man yung tawag sa people of God, the key here is, that they are commandment-keeping people. So it all goes back to the beginning, which is to keep the Ten Commandments. Yun lang naman talaga yung secreto is. So keep the Ten Commandments and everything that, that is part of the Ten Commandments. Raise the standard. Dapat iiba talaga tayo. We were entrusted with the greatest wealth of truth. No? According to Testimonies, Volume 7, page 138. Talagang I tried to remember that because we were really chosen as a peculiar people, as it says in Peter. And... We have to be proud as Adventists. Mag tayo mahiya, kahit sa church pa lang, let's encourage one another. We, we need to show that brotherly love. I agree with Pastor. He, he emphasized that, no? Dapat kahit tayo is nasa forefront ng example para lilitaw talaga tayo as the people of God. And hindi naman kailangan na napakaraming tayo, eh. Anyway, even even in, in politics, no? It, it, the um, the p- popularity... Um, it's not a popularity contest when it comes to the truth. Basta hold on ka lang sa truth. Usually, it's the minority that has the truth, eh? Especially when it comes to faith and religion. So, let's just continue to seek the Lord. That's my message um, in a nutshell na binanggit ko kanina. Now, um, for this afternoon, I thought, kasi dala ko naman talaga yung laptop ko today, maybe I can give you a little uh, inspiration on proper Christian dress. Would that be good? Because this is very important, so at least um, when you go home, if you want, if you have time, you can rearrange your closet a little bit. And for the women, at least meron kayong idea pa- paano mananamit para talagang lilitaw tayo as Adventists. And then for the men, I also have a little bit of advice um, on, how, uh, on what to emphasize as important when it comes to proper dress and appearance. So I'll start off really quickly. Ito na lang yung guide ko. As I mentioned, nabigla ako kanina eh. Um, I'd really like to highlight young fashion in today's generation. Diba kung, kung lalabas tayo, for example, kahit sa mall or sa tag, taglabas, usually, um, maraming fashion conscious. Kung baga, talagang pinag isipan ng mga tao ngayon yung pina, dinadamit nila. Dapat kailangan, yes, sunod sa uso, exactly, Trendy ba yung damit ko? Mapa-impress ko ba yung mga tao or yung, yung, yung crush ko, for example? So, 
Yung message ko lang dyan is, um, we don't have to impress anyone except the Lord. And the Lord doesn't even mind um, if our clothes are very simple as long as they're clean and they're, and also what we wear will affect our health. Why? Because dapat yung suot natin, for instance, hindi siya dapat masyadong tight para sa mga babae, di ba? Minsan tight, tight na tight yung suot namin para fitting talaga at saka kita yung katawan. No, it should be loose and um, it should cover the bones and the extremities as I said earlier. Dapat sa mga babae, alam ko napakainit ngayon ng panahon kung pwede lang um, shorts na lang pero of course we have to be proper right so the longer the better but if you have to wear something a little shorter dapat below the knees pa rin okay para sa mga babae tapos dito sa sa ating um, extremities ng arms at saka sa chest area natin dapat covered so to make sure that you have an idea of how it looks I dressed up like that then today so at least makita nyo diba? so it's possible it's still stylish and um it's just a matter of anong, anong quality. Dapat cotton kasi medyo mainit din ngayon yung panahon natin dito. No? And then, um, yeah, I think you can invest in like Sabbath dress. Uh, ako ay nagda-design na po ng mga Sabbath dresses. So, uh, kung may internet kayo, or Instagram or Facebook, magpa-post naman ako doon. Eh, makikita nyo naman. Um, so, if you're interested, let me know. Um, hinahanda ako siya ngayon. But, um, moving on, uh, I was saying about yung fashion sa ngayong panahon, nahalata ako rin. Kasi, um, during the week, I work full-time for an internet company. So, familiar talaga ako sa, sa internet. And I noticed, marami ngayong fashion bloggers. Narinig niyo na sila? Yung mga, yung mga um, babae na hindi na sila model pero sobrang sikat sila sa internet kasi napaka-fashionable sila. So may mga blogs yan, yung mga fashion bloggers. Tapos um, araw-araw sila nagpo-post ng mga ibang outfit nila. Siyempre, yung mga uso, yung mga ma- mahalin, tapos minsan miniskirt and whatnot. Lahat naman imagine nyo, um, parang ando na. Tapos, biro nyo, binabayaran sila ng, at saka binibigyan ng maraming regalo dahil lang napaka-influential nila. May following sila kasi napaka-stylish sila. So, or nila. And, um, the, the, the problem here, and I found, uh, I can show it to you actually from my laptop. Itong babae kasi, pangalan niya is Chiara Ferrani. She's Italian, no? Actually, I follow her as well. <laughs> she, she's a fa- famous fashion blogger. At saka, um, napakasikat yan, no? But going back to the principle itself is basically the risk with young people dahil napaka-engrossed na sila sa fashion, ito na parang naging hanap buhay nila kasi napaka-enjoy nila yung fashion is that in the end, na-divert yung focus nila from the Lord to things like these. And um, it becomes really risky because they could be doing other things that are in accordance with God's, God's will and law, no? Uh, so, that's the problem. Kumbaga, fashion is also one of the snares of Satan. So we have to be really careful when it comes to Christian dress and, and fashion because um, basta, ma- mabilis, it's so easy to compromise. It's so easy na, kumbaga, ah, okay lang, maikli lang kasi mainit. We tell ourselves and then biglang iikli yan ang iikli until spaghetti strap na yan. In fact, I heard sa mga Seventh-day Adventist churches sa US, um, sabi daw ni pastor, mga spaghetti straps na sinusuot nila for Sabbath, tapos mga mini skirts. So, um, I was just really shocked and we have to pray for them and we really have to show them that this is the proper way and it's still fashionable and beautiful and according to the Lord's will, no? So that's one thing. Aside from the fashion, it's also really important na wag na, wag na tayo mag, mag um, paiba pa ng mukha natin. Uh, it says here, naalala niyo si Jezebel sa Bible. There's a quote that says, um, I think it's in Ezekiel 23.40, Jezebel painted her face and tired her hair, or sorry, her head. Face paint and ornaments belong to the uniform of the world. So just a, a little example lang. So yung makeup, hindi na naman taga, talaga kailangan eh, di ba? Minsan, kung, kaka, um, kung lalagay kayo ng concealer or whatnot, um, pwede man siguro, or lip gloss, pero as much as possible, you try to avoid, no? Kasi uh, we are, or we've already been blessed naturally um, by the Lord. So if it's not necessary, show your natural beauty na lang, di ba? And then of course, yung jewelry, hindi na rin yun kailangan eh. Alam niyo yung history ng, ng jewelry bracelets? Sorry. It all came... From the, the ancient times of slavery. Kasi yung mga slaves, di ba, naka-ano yan sila? Um, 
Yes. Um, and be, and then eventually that's how how it all started with uh, it become you know like my next having us in Bible study ma let uh, you know when you wear jewelry it's technically like you're a captive of Satan if you really think about it because he shall you not so I was like oh wow Paris it's tempting and it's hard because it means I'm going to fashionable but try to avoid it if you can watches are okay and then um, the, another thing that, uh, that also is a problem with the, the way women dress today in, in particular is kasi kapag maganda yung suot mo, syempre emphasize talaga yung, yung outfit mo, the problem there is it starts to develop into a mental type of snare where nade-develop yung pride natin. Kasi sobrang ganda ng outfit ko, so ak- akala mo ano, uh, mula lang, uh, basta maganda lang. No, like we start to think differently. Kasi, kasi nga, you're appreciated in a certain way. You have an effect on certain people na, wow, ang ganda ng damit niya. Parang sobrang ganda na, or sobrang mahal, na it fosters pride in, in the wearer's mind. So there's a risk for that. Kung masyadong ano, extravagant yung damit natin. And because of that, it's better to keep it modest and simple. Diba? And then finally, another problem that's existing right now. I want ko lang baka hindi sa inyo, pero sa taglabas is napakamahal na mga damit at saka yung mga designer bags, designer shoes, at saka yung yung pera na ginagamit para lang mabili yung mga bagay na ganyan. Sayang yung pera kasi pwede pa matulungan or ipagkain pakainin yung mga tao na yung naghihirap na. Pero hindi ng mga tao na realize kasi sobrang engrossed nga sila sa fashion na hindi na nila matulungan yung may kailangan ng tulong. So that's always a risk. Um, in First Peter 3, verse 3 to 3, it says, Holy women who trust God do not adorn themselves thus. No? So kung, baga, kung babae kami, tayong banal, Dapat hindi tayo magsuot ng ganyan. Dapat iba talaga tayo. And then in Proverbs 7.10, magandang quote to, Harlots are known by their dress. Anong ibig sabihin ng harlots? Ano? Prostitutes. Yes, harlots was the original wor- word used to describe yung mga women back in the day na talagang they offer themselves to men in exchange for um, any any benefit, right? So, uh, in the Bible, in Proverbs 7.10, it says that harlots are known by their dress. Siyempre, obvious naman talaga sa pagdamit nila, no? Kasi yan yung, yung um, sinusunod nila. Sa, sa, parang, whatever your your character is, yung buhay mo, ma- makikita yan sa sinusunod mo rin, eh. So, in their case, it's very obvious, di ba? Ayan. So, Based on ano yung na-analyze natin ngayon, yung taglabas and what the current situation is, how can we be different and what, what should we really wear, no? So, instead of looking at yung mga fashion bloggers as mga favorite icons natin, kilala niyo po ba si Kate Middleton? Ayan, si Kate Middleton. Diba siya yung nag-asawa kay Prince? William. Ayan. Guapo din yung asawa niya, no? Guapo siyang prince. So, Kate Middleton kasi, she's a great example um, of dressing modestly. Meron pang konting adjustments na pwede niya magawa, pero overall, kasi royal family siya, kailangan may dress code talaga sila. Kung baga, if she observes the dress code, no, as a royal member, um, what more tayo na we're royal members of the heavenly kingdom, we should represent uh, the way, you know, angels dress almost, kumbaga, right? And that, that um, modesty. So, yung dress niya, sinusot niya dito, di ba? Maganda pa rin siya, pero um, tamang-tama sa instructions ni Lord, di ba? Mahaba. Siyempre, dito pupunta siya sa isang event, pero you can cut it up to three-fourths, like here. Still nice. So, ganun yung mga damit na dini design ko. So sana pag pray niyo rin yun ha para palagi ako ma-inspire sa magandang designs at colors. Um ito isa pang example pero medyo ma- medyo short na. <laughs> pero yung kulay, 'di ba? Malinis. At saka ang ganda diyan, pwede rin para hindi niyo na kailangan mag-jewelry. May accessories na lang or embellishments yung dress niyo. May details, kumbaga dito, counting beadwork or dito, beadwork, 'di ba? Okay na yung accent na yan sa damit niyo. So, may options talaga. Don't worry. <laughs> 
And then finally, what, syempre sabi, sabi ko kanina, lahat um, may ibang fashionistas, marami silang ginagasto. Hindi naman natin kailangan maggasto eh. Basta, it's our, our dress is clean, our dress is modest, it's healthful. In fact, may mga quotations nga ako galing sa Spirit of Prophecy um, in Ministry of Healing kasi what we wear should be healthful. Dapat yun nga hindi masyadong fit, di ba? So, it covers all aspects. And then, ito, very interesting, Deuteronomy 22.5. Women should not wear men's clothes. And men should not wear women's clothes. Eh, anong nangyari ngayon? <laughs> ako pa naman, mahilig ako sa pants kasi I feel so secure in pants. Pero, as much as possible, avoid natin magsuot ng mga ganun bagay. Especially in fashion, right? I mean, I just had a, a little shot here. But even in fashion, yung mga lalaki ngayon, yung mga latest designs ng mga top designers, yung mga lalaki nakadress na eh. Kumbaga, yan na yun rin yung uso. Which is not in accordance with the Bible according to Deuteronomy. So we should really be cautious there. And then finally, this is my favorite um, quote for Christian dress. At saka, you can use this as a foundation if ever mag-share kayo ng Christian dress sa iba. Why don't we open our Bibles in 1 Timothy 2, verse 9. Okay, so dapat um, dala nyo yung Bibles nyo, no? And just a little tip, um, kasi ako, syempre information overload to lahat na sinashare ko or kahit sinashare ng mga pastors natin. So I urge you, every every Sabbath, magdala kayo ng notebook at saka ball pen para masulat niyo yung quotes. Tapos pag uwi niyo, the whole week you have time to research, recap, lahat na tinuro ng mga pastors or what you learned from me today. At least my notes din kayo kasi one day, malay niyo, um, so, nagsusuot na kayo ng napakagandang modest dress, tapos tatanungin kayo ng mga taglabas, oh, but ganun yung suot mo? Um, alam nyo na, alam nyo na bakit yung ginagawa yun, ano yung pinagtayuan nyo, ba? Because you have, you studied it. It's important to study it. Hindi lang makinig, listening is half of it. Studying it and applying it is the other half. Ayan. So, 1 Timothy 2.9 in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So, galing na yan sa Bible mismo, no? And another really nice quote for Christian dress is in the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. So, pwede nyo lang siya isulat, no? Basta Numbers, chapter 15, Verse 38, malapit na ako matapos. A Christian's dress should remind him of God's law. Kumbaga, when we dress the way we dress, um, which is modestly and according to the law uh, and the instructions of the Lord, na remind, mas lalo tayo na remind about God's law. Kasi tama yung suot natin in His eyes according to His law. So what we wear will also affect our characters and, and what we remember. Ayan. Why am I dressing like this? Kasi ito yung, yung um, hilig, uh, hilig ng Panginoon, di ba? So it, 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 it has a deeper meaning than just dressing modestly itself. So Numbers 15, 38 to 39 yun. And then I have two last quotes, napakaganda. Maybe you could just take note of them. The first one is, in Messages to Young People, page 314, it is not your dress that makes you of value in the Lord's sight. So what does that mean? Hindi yung pinadamit, pananamit mo na, na nagbibigay sa iyo ng value sa tingin ng Panginoon. So ano yung importante kay Lord? It is the inward adorning, the graces of the Spirit, the kind words, the thoughtful consideration for others that God values. Do without unnecessary trimmings and lay aside for the advancement of the cause of God the means thus saved. Kumbaga, what really matters to the Lord is again, yung puso natin and how we really um, behave, what our characters are like. Hindi, like, hindi yung pagka suot lang natin, no? So remember that. And then finally, in Testimonies, Volume 2, page 66 um, and 610 to 614, what should all Christians do? Ito. All Christians should dress modestly, ayan, number one, healthfully, tastefully, and neatly, thus representing the principles of the heavenly kingdom. Kasi sa heaven, yan yung mga qualities na sa, makikita sa kanila, sa angels. So we have to, in our own way here on earth, start applying these things. No? So 
alam ko lahat yung binanggit ko more on what women should wear but for the men naman yung importante diyan is because men in general they're very very formal naman diba usually maka-collar na sila mahaba na um, ang importante sa lalaki ay um, malinis so clean dapat from head to toe yung buhok maayos yung um, yung ano yung amoy maayos at saka, <laughs> at saka yung pa Uh, yung shoes, nakapolish. Importante daw yung nakapolish yung shoes. So you double check your shoes for the gentlemen and make sure that they're polished for Sabbath. Kasi yung dress code niyo naman, pretty, ano no, standard colored shirt, tapos ano, slacks or pants and a nice belt. So, uh, sana meron kayo natutunan. Ewan ko kung um, may mga tanong kayo. Sana kung meron, masagot ko rin. But, um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to open the floor just for a few opportunities For questions, if you'd like. Yes. <laughs> Pwede, Tagalog, okay lang naman. Ah, ganun. Diet? No. Gender? Okay. Talaga? Forbidden pala yung ginawa ko ngayon. <laughs> Kaya pala kung nag-visit ako ng churches, hindi nila alam to. Ako po, bilang school principal. Oo. This is in Germany na. Ako yung nagsalita niya sa Batanga City. Ang tinakay ko sa Batanga City is Gilded. Mapulatong boy, that's my boy. Apa. Kasi wala pong nagkukundin niyan. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-mm. Opo. Tama din yun. May point din po kayo. Teachings, beliefs. So. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Uh, yung mga Wow, praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Iniiwasan. Oo po. Wow. That's good Good to hear. And I'm medyo... Un- oh, sige. Akong bala sa inyo. I'll give you the, all the information you need. Um, actually, kasi may, may program naman talaga sa internet na pwede mag-upload ng mga decks and presentations. Siguro ang gagawin ko, lahat yung mga presentations ko, pwede nyo ma-access doon, ma-download. Tapos pwede kayo i- i-improve pa or i-optimize. But... Yeah, yun na yung ginagawa nyo. And I encourage you to really take notes and, and learn kasi yun na, the, yung truth lang talaga yung panglaban natin eh. As Jesus, when he was tempted, said, it is written. Diba? Yan yung defense niya kay Satan kasi tinatempt siya palagi. But it's very, very interesting to, to know this feedback. And kaya pala hindi masyadong pinag-usapan. Pero don't worry, God is good, God is patient, and he's very forgiving. And there are a lot of innocent people na hindi naman nila alam. And that is why people like I are here um, and pastor because we want to, what we've learned, share with you guys para malaman nyo rin. Tapos the choice is yours. Kung gusto nyo sundin, or sundin in the future, whatever it is. But I always encourage you to apply right away. And remember, it's always for the best interest of the Lord. So it's, it's not difficult. State of mind lang yun.